This is Cape Chronicle. I'm Jacob McClellan. Trent Summers is Cape Girardeau's newest city council member. He was elected earlier this year to represent Ward 3. Trent Summers, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Jacob. Well, first off, I mean, what, what, uh, what inspired you to, uh, to go ahead and make a run for, for city council? Well, I've had a history of working in government uh, at the federal and state level, uh, uh, over 10 years experience, I think, uh, in, in different capacities. And uh, I grew up in Cape Girardeau and moved away for a time. And uh, my wife and I decided to come back here to raise our family. And uh, I think being involved in your community is something that's important to do. And uh, I felt that I could uh, bring some of my experience in, in government at different levels and uh, contribute to the betterment of our city. What was some of the uh, some of the government work that you had that you had done before uh, coming to Cape Girardeau? I started out of college as a field representative for U.S. Senator John Ashcroft. Uh, following that, I joined uh, with uh, at the time Secretary of State Matt Blunt, and uh, worked with him. Uh, then, as he became governor, I, I moved up with him and then uh, worked in a couple different capacities at the state level. I was at the Department of Natural Resources and at the uh, State Office of Administration. Uh, and then I, I left the Blunt administration to join the Missouri Chamber of Commerce, where I, I worked on government affairs for them. Um, which is what I was doing uh, when I made the decision to, to come back here to Cape Girardeau. And now that you're in Cape Girardeau, when you're not on city council, what's your, uh, what's your day job? What's, uh, what do you do I'm now? an account executive for Red Letter Communications. Uh, we're a local marketing agency. I uh, have an office downtown, which uh, I really enjoy working downtown and, and being able to uh, work in that atmosphere. It's something that, that I think is a, a great part of my job. But uh, uh, we have a multitude of clients that we uh, do advertising and marketing for, and, and I work with those clients and our production staff to deliver uh, the best marketing plans for them. Now, in, in your mind, what's the, uh, what's the role of, of a city council and of uh, local government? Uh, well, the role of a city councilman, I, you know, you, uh, city council is unique from state or federal in that I think it's the most direct relationship that you have with your government. Uh, there's not a lot of the, the red meat political issues that dominate, you know, TV and, and current events. Uh, it's, it's much more direct uh, impact on people's day-to-day -day lives, whether it's trash pickup or streets. Uh, so I think that dynamic between um, your constituents and the, the elected official is different. Um, and, and it's what one of the things that attracted me to do this, because I, I participated at different levels, but uh, I think really to, to have an impact on, on people's day-to-day -day lives is much more available at the, the local level. Um, as far as the, the city council as a whole goals, you know, I think their main job is to represent uh, their constituents and to help um, ease the uh, hurdles or burdens that they might have uh, because of their interaction with government. Now, talking about some of those, uh, those, those, those real, real um, you know, daily activities and, and ways that, that, that city council members will, 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 will work with residents, one of the things that you've been working on has been with folks in, in, in the, his, the Boulevard Historic District in sure. Ward 3, which is where there's been uh, some, some parking issues there. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit, give us a little bit of a background on, uh, on, the, on the parking issues there and what you're doing right now to work with residents uh, moving forward. Sure. Um, this was an issue that I inherited, really. Sure. Uh, my predecessor, Deb Tracy, had worked very closely. I, she lives in this area, so it was something that directly impacted her as well. But uh, I think it's been going on for around seven years now. Um, there's a, a neighborhood, uh, a historic boulevard district, where uh, they live. The, the houses are in close proximity to the campus, um, as you know, I'm sure everyone on campus is well aware of the parking issues that accommodate that. Uh, but there, there's a group of uh, uh, neighborhood residents in this area that uh, some time ago brought uh, the problem that they were having with campus parking, um, basically taking up all the parking in front of their houses. And I think there was uh, circumstances where there were cars that were left for weeks at a time while a student may have been at college or you know living elsewhere. So in order to address that, the city passed an ordinance that uh, restricted parking in these areas, um, some altogether and uh, some within the uh, time of 9 to 3. And I think that largely solved a lot of the, the s problems that uh, the residents were facing at the time. But like, like most state governments, or functions of government, solving one problem can create two or three more. And I think we, we saw that happen in this scenario. Um, there was some instances where there was a, a family or two with uh, a, a child with special needs that uh, w weren't able to park in front of their house. Um, there were people that were having issues uh, if they had guests over during the day, if they had students returning home from college who were away uh, that weren't able to park uh, in front of the house. And uh, to try to remedy that situation, uh, there's a, a group that's uh, worked very hard. I met with them uh, a little while ago, and, and they, were, they impressed me with the work that they'd done and the research they'd put into this and come up with a plan where uh, they would formulate a, a system of uh, permitted parking that would uh, keep the current system in place and wouldn't add any more restrictions, but it would enable them to 
uh, or a resident to buy a voucher or a, a parking permit from the city to enable parking in that restricted area during the given time period. Now, one of the uh, more controversial uh, issues uh, facing Cape Girardeau right now is the uh, the issue of urban urban deer hunting. Um, tell us a little bit about what your thoughts are on uh, on perhaps allowing uh, an urban bow hunting season here in Cape. This is definitely it's a it's a controversial, it's an emotional issue. Uh, I think both sides are very polarized and uh, very passionate about their positions on this issue. The way I approach it, um, the Missouri Department of Conservation uh, has the constitutional authority to regulate fish and wildlife in the state of Missouri. This is a, a method with dealing with uh, a wildlife situation, particularly in an urban environment they have approved and that, that they deem it as both safe and effective way to manage the deer population. And I, I think due to that, it is something that, that the city should definitely consider. And uh, I support it as in a way to effectively manage our deer problem in, in this, the city limits of Cape Girardeau. Um, I think because of where we are located physically, we have that interaction where the urban area is meeting the rural area probably at a quicker rate than some other places. Okay. Um, you also help out on the uh, Gerardo Goes Green Advisory Board. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about this, about the uh, about the role of this advisory board. Um, the board uh, is is created, I think, to serve as a advisory co committee to the council uh, to to look at what city government does and identify ways that maybe they could be more environmentally friendly. Uh, they could be more efficient with their use of resources. Um, also, ways that you know the city might provide opportunities uh, for the citizens of Cape Girardeau to be more environmentally friendly and uh, to to be more efficient with their resources. I think we have a great recycling program here in Cape Girardeau that, that has grown out of some of the work uh, done by that committee. And uh, I know they've, they've made other recommendations as far as uh, the ways that the city can uh, cut down on their use of electricity, uh, maybe not use as much gas in some of the service and, and uh, vehicles, uh, things like that that they provide recommendations and kind of guidance to that the council doesn't have the ability to, to dig in as deep, uh, but they can do on the side. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Kapaha Field. Mm -hmm. um, there could be some changes coming to, 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 to that baseball field that's uh, you know, nestled in, in Kapaha Park. Right now, how is it currently managed and, and, and what could be on the horizon for, uh, sure. for Kapaha Field? Hey, Kapaha Park's uh, you know, a crown jewel for the city. It's, it's kind of our central park or forest park. Uh, and uh, it's a, a valuable resource. And it's unique in the fact that uh, we have the baseball field there that uh, uh, traditionally in the past, uh, the administration of that baseball field, the upkeep, the day-to-day -day maintenance has been handled by a uh, Kappa Hall board that has overseen that, that has provided funding for that, they raised money, um, and then they've administered uh, the you know the day-to-day -day operations of that. And the, the dynamics of that board has changed where they, they no longer believe they have the ability to continue to operate in that way and they have approached the city about uh, assuming those responsibility and, and the city is going to do that. Uh, I know uh, Ms. Thompson has, has worked with that board and is working on a plan to, uh, after the city assumes that responsibility, um, how that administration is still going to work. I believe some of the park staff has met with the, uh, the people that maintain the field to, uh, to learn how they do what they do and, and be able to continue operating in the manner that they are. Um, the, you know, there's also some issues with the, the people that use the field, uh, the, the college being one of them, uh, Kappa Hall, the, the, uh, the semi-pro team as well as the American Legion team. And I think the, the city is uh, looking at how the, that will continue that relationship moving forward. Trent Summers is a member of Cape Girardeau's City Council. Trent, thank you so much for dropping by. Thanks for having me.